1967 Olds 442 by Lindbergh. Uh, coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, GM fans. Are you ready to hang out with Dr. Olds as we unbox this 1967 Oldsmobile by Lindbergh? This is the hardtop, of course, and it's very, very nice. You don't want to miss it. So before we begin, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I open up a brand new kit, you are the first to know about it. Let's get this thing up to 100 likes because I'm pretty sure more than 100 people like Dr. Oldsmobile, so why not like Monster Hobbies videos while you're at it? <laughs> Anyway, without further ado, let's get down to the GM showroom where Dr. Olds will show us a brand new model. Actually, it would be cool if I got the actor on here that was Dr. Olds to actually review that part of it. And then I could wrap up at the end, but that's not going to happen without the support of you guys. Or, I don't even know if he's still around. <laughs> anyway, let's see what's in the box. 1967 marked Oldsmobile's final year for this type of body style. In 68, it would get refined to the ultimate flashy muscle car look. But while we're still here, you can note the coolness of the rear fenders in here with a Coke bottle. Lots of chroma on those rocker panels, as well as the great big chrome grille. This kit features the W30 forced air induction system and is by Lindbergh. And the nice part about this is like I said before, uh, AMT, Monogram, Revell, they were all competing with Tamiya Japan for best detailed kits. And in this time frame, Lindbergh jumped in on the boat and brought us out these great kits as well. So looking at the side of the box here, we of course have the uh, 67 Olds. Opening hood, detailed chassis with complete suspension, chrome plated parts, detailed engine, vinyl tires, and a detailed interior. Now they show photos of the actual car just so you can see it. Let's zoom in a little. There we go. You can see of course the engine has the gold. This is the 400 cubic inch engine because Oldsmobile still stood for 400 cubes, four speed, dual exhaust, the W30 being the forced air induction package to it. Or at least the good stuff. <laughs> Okay, and then there's the interior going in there. Let me just kick this back a little bit. The end of the box, of course, looks like the top of the box. And then here we get the side, side view profile of the car. And then paint and cement not included. There's the world symbol, Limburg again, over eight inches in length. And then the bottom of the box actually has some detail to it as well. Ages 10 and up, 8 inches long it says, and then it shows the car itself. Funny that they used a more modern type of car for the measurements. 125th scale, and then we've got Japanese, French, German, Spanish, Italian, and Dutch right there for our different flags of the world. And then, of course, the end of the box. Now, the only thing I don't like about this is that it uses the same type of box that Ravel introduced for a little while. The whole lid doesn't lift off like this. This actually hinges, and I hate these boxes with a passion. But anyway, so there's our box there. And now we can see our instructions. Now, this kit came out in 1997, but I bought it July 3rd, 2001 at PM Hobbies in Calgary for $12.50, which is unheard of in our era. Inflation. But this is of note because I had just been in here in Alberta for a year at that time, moving out from British Columbia. So, it's kind of significant in that regard. We'll take a look at the instructions later. Now again, Lindbergh had some really nice detail. They also brought out like the 61 Chevy, uh, which was a nice mid-year. Lindbergh brought out some mid-year stuff. And this was a good actual thing for Lindbergh at the time because 
The Lindbergh model kits were usually old pyro kits and some other manufacturers because Lindbergh kind of collected all these. They did have their own stuff as well. There's the glass. But um, they were old, old molds and a lot of them had fit and issue problems. So this was a fresh start for Lindbergh at the time. You see the nice white detail parts, the engine block. They also sort of adapted a Johan style for packing because they had these big knobs on the bottom of the parts trees so that this would stack in all nice. Of course I took a look at this kit a few times. Something broke off there. <laughs> anyway, there's some more parts. The interior again has the separate molded door panels, much like Ravel and AMT of the time period. And of course Tamiya Japan. It'd be nice to get a Tamiya kit of this era and bring it up. You guys can see it, but I don't have one. <laughs> the firewall and all the details and the rear axles and whatnot. The interior panels, floorboards. There's our chassis and frame molded in. And then, of course, my favorite, the chrome. And a lot of chrome on this one, so I'm going to have fun showing you that. And then we've got our tires, and on the very bottom in here, it's a decal sheet. It's got the gauges on there. So, without further ado, let's move all this stuff out of the way. Whoops. And look at our instructions. And once again, we bring you the instruction sheet, because without the instruction sheet, where would we be? Well, for many of us that have built a lot of models, we probably don't need this anymore. But for the new person, you'd be lost. <laughs> so we've got our read this first in all the languages that were on that back of the box. So that's just the beginning. Okay, now we'll open this up and see all the goodness that is the 67 Oldsmobile. So let's bring the camera up close into our panels here. All right, so starting off. Now there's little triangles with numbers in here. I do believe there is a color chart somewhere on these instructions. Yes, right at the back, in the bottom panel. So anyway, bear with me, I didn't write them on this time. <laughs> Okay, here's our engine block. So we've got, of course, the left and right hand side with the transmission. It's very popular in all these kits in the 67 era, if you look in the other videos of mine. So we've got the oil pan, the starter, the cylinder heads, the intake manifold, and the filler tube going right in the front. Correct for the Oldsmobile engine of this era. I'm scraping along my back wall there. Okay, panel two, we've got the valve covers going on, the left and right hand exhaust manifolds, the front engine cover and the lower radiator hose, as well as a carburetor and distributor. And then up here, we are treated to an enlarged view of the intake manifold. There's an alternator bracket that goes on those two mounting locations. And then our alternator would fit underneath there. The clutch, the fan, the pulleys, a power steering pump, so this is more deluxe version of the Oldsmobile, uh, and brackets going up the top, power steering bracket, and all the rest. So now we'll get into panel four. I'll just zoom out a little. Okay. And of course all of these instructions are in the universal language of illustrations. <laughs> So there's our chassis and frame, and the transmission cross member with the exhaust pipes as one long piece, which is kind of nice for uh, alignment. The engine block pops in from underneath, and there's the idler arm and the pitman arm for your steering. Then into panel 5, we actually get the front suspension with the lower A-arm assembly all as one piece, the tie rod across the front, and our front springs. Then in panel six, let's see. Panel six, we have our rear axle with the rear axle upper half. So it's molded uh, top to bottom there. Then our shock absorbers and our rear coil springs would go in there for the independent rear type suspension. 
the drive shaft. Then we get into the interior panel, which is a large illustration covering steps seven and eight, cut at an angle. So it shows the floor pan going in here and then the front seat with the seat backs and the rear seat dropping in place. Then we get into the side separate molded interior sidewalls, which I love these things because you get detail like the window winder cranks actually look like GM window winder cranks instead of little lines that you got to paint silver. <laughs> then we've got a three or yeah, three piece console. So the bottom, the chrome trim that drops in and the shift lever. And then we've got our dashboard here with the um, brake and clutch pedal as well as the steering wheel. Then we'll go on over into panel number nine. Number nine, number nine, like the Beatles had <laughs> the end of that album. Anyway, so we got our vent window and there's a chrome vent trim. So that's a really nice touch because you don't have to paint silver in there. Then we've got our windshield with the sun visors molded in place. Another good point on Lindbergh. The rear window glass and the rear view mirror. Okay. And then we're really up against the back wall there. So here we've got our body and there's little wheel wheel extension pieces in here because I couldn't mold it as a, a one piece. The firewall which actually has the nice wheel uh, inner fender type divots in there. Um, the brake fluid reservoir and then our interior bucket would pop in there. Firewall would glue in there somewhere to it. Then we get the body going on to the frame and chassis. And then, this is really interesting. Oh, you get rear window chrome molding trim that you pop into the back. Into that tunneled roof. And then you've got your uh, lower upper and lower taillight lenses popping in and a chrome license plate going in the back. Okay, turning us around here. In panel 13, we have our radiator wall going on there with the radiator shroud on the top, the radiator and the upper radiator hose. And then we get the exciting part of the under hood details. You get that nice air cleaner with the right and left hand rubber hoses that are going up to the front for your for your W30 forced air induction system. And then the front grill with the headlights going in and another license plate popping on there. Optional, some places didn't use the front license plate. Some states, some provinces in Canada, like Alberta, doesn't have one in the front. Anyway, there's your hood. You get these nice hood hinges if you wish to use them. Or maybe you do use them. Anyway, the hood molding and chrome piece. Windshield wipers, separate. And then we got the hood with the louvers in there. And individually molded left and right chrome door handles, which is always nice because you don't need to get your drill in there and try to drill them out to make them look realistic or, you know, do a painting trick and just paint the edge and whatever but you still know a piece of plastic is coming right out to the door. This is the actual, like, real GM door handle, only smaller. And then here we get all this nice chrome trim going along the uh, sides of the car, and up in there. The wheels go together, sort of uh, AMT style, with a wheel lock and a retainer and all that. And then in our final panels, right at the bottom, you get these nice, uh, very clear um, uh, illustrations here, sorry. The 442 emblem, those are decals. So this is your decal lo location placement thing. But you know, you could actually like scan this in your computer and just remove this line coming down and then add in the little lines in like Photoshop or something. And then you can color this thing in and see what it looks like before you actually paint the model. That's kind of a nice feature. And then here we've got the front and rear of the car. Uh, not the best sort of copy for detail. And then there's the paint guide chart. So very nice. You can see how uh, Lindbergh is really up the bar in these kits. 
and made them very close to what AMT was doing at the time. So our first component here in our model kit, of course, is the body. And I've also got the hood sitting here because it actually broke out of the kit. This might have been the only piece that I actually started on with this thing. Maybe I removed some seam lines, I'm not too sure anymore. But as is typical for 67, all these GM bodies had the tunneled roof in them. And you can see there's some nice uh, Coke bottle fenders. This, of course, is the last year of this body style for Oldsmobile before they got into the super powerful type look of the later days. There, of course, is the side of our body. There's a 442 script right there that you could hand paint or put the decal on, decal on. They do have um, a relief going right in here. Quite a deep channel, actually. Can't really see. Can you see that? I don't know. That's for the chrome molding that was on the uh, parts tree. Underneath looks very nice and crisp. There are some mold, uh, mold marks in here. Of course, number 16 hobby blade. They're all in there too. <laughs> then you've got the little alignment pins for the windshield. Now this isn't uh, sunken in like the AMT Impala was. 67 Impala, but Actually, is it? No. But it should still look good anyway. And there, of course, is the back of the car. Again, the 442 emblem and the door lock, or the trunk lock, pardon me, with the Oldsmobile emblem above the uh, keyhole. And I think I have sanded this thing down, so there would have been some seam lines up along there and whatnot, but pretty good. Another nice little thing is they have the bump here for the two pieces of chrome that went across where they would meet on the windshield frame. Um, there's the uh, vents in here, which I also do believe uh, 67 for GM might have been the last year of these vents on the hood. Then after that the hood actually comes up over top of this. Not too sure on the 68 Olds, have to take a look at it. The interesting thing, the 68 Olds also had the front grille styled much the same as the 67. And then in 69 they went to the now famous Oldsmobile style grille. Uh, there's your hood louvers on the hood. And underneath you've got the fireproof matting, although it's not really there. <laughs> uh, we've got holes here. Uh, mold marks, so you need your number 16 hobby blade, but let's see how the hood fits onto the fenders And again a nice tight fit on the hood. It's a very good work by Lindbergh not sloppy at all Next up we have our chassis and of course our floor in here all molded as one piece There's the fuel cell looks like an Oldsmobile of the era perimeter frame and all the other goodies. There's holes of course for your exhaust pipes and springs and all the rest. Turning it over now the interior floor is a separate piece from this so nothing to see here. The nice um, mounts for the engine block sitting in there. Upper A-arms molded in place so basically that is our chassis and frame. The next parts tree we'll look at is the suspension and some of the underhood details. So here we have our rear differential and our front suspension with the GMA arms and cross members and all kinds of supports. The steering linkage and then we have those little components there. The inner fender extension aprons. The firewall with master cylinder and the heater as well as a fan, radiator, red fan shroud, the uh, top of the differential, uh, radiator hoses, and of course those intake hoses. So taking a look at the level of detail, it's very nice, a little bit kind of soft, but still good detail work on the radiator and all the shroud bits. 
turning it over. Don't see very many sink or mold marks on this thing. So again, not too much to need cleaning. So very nice work by Lindbergh. Following up with our chassis components, we have our exhaust pipes. These are molded as one long piece, which is nice for alignment purposes. We've got our wheel backs here. <laughs> My rod knocking everything out. <clears throat> um, transmission brace. The coil springs for, I do believe, the, uh, the shorter ones are front and the longer rear, or vice versa. Shock absorbers and our drive shaft. So again, some moderate detail. Looks a little soft, but it's still there, which is nice. Uh, might be a couple little mold marks to take out in here, but not, not bad. Good detail. Again, wheel backs look kind of generic, so they could be on either front or rear. Again, this will be the AMT style with the backing knob on there so that the wheels don't pull through the tires. Alright, so I've actually got two parts trees on here. This is one for the engine. Um, so I'll just move this off to the side, but know that the engine block is in this portion of the review. This is where the hood was at one point, but I did remove it. So we've got our license plates here, the hood hinges, which are at full extension if you want your hood up and displayed that way. Then we've got our, <clears throat> let's see, the intake manifold, the front cover, water pump and timing chain. Then we've got our distributor. We have our exhaust manifolds, the uh, cylinder heads, the oil pan. Then we've got our belts and pulleys, the brackets for the alternator and power steering pump, the alternator and the power steering pump. Then the starter motor, the um, reservoir on our master cylinder, and of course the front of the car. So let's just take a look at the detail up here. You can see again, these do look like the correct W30 heads. So quite nice. The intake manifold looks correct. Turning it over, really no uh, mold marks at all. So nice work there. Let's just take a look at the engine block. We also have our wheel retainer clips and all the frost plugs are in the right spots. Transmission looks pretty decent. It's got some linkages molded in too, which would be nice to uh, dry brush on there. So again, quite a lot of great work from Lindbergh. The next parts tree has our floor pan in it, which you can see has pretty much correct looking type seat runners. Um, there's the gas pedal there, a couple of holes for mounting up on your underneath your car with the package shelf there, the uh, front or the rear bench seat, pardon me, and we've got our instrument panel here. So let's bring this up to our camera. See the nice detail on the kind of tuck and roll type pattern on there. Let's take a look at that instrument panel. So here we've got our pedals, the clutch and the brake. You're going to have to carefully get that out. Again, the number 16 hobby blade is great for that because you can push on the thing. There we've got our instrument clusters, as well as there's a radio in there. Little teeny glove box. How many... <laughs> Got to ask you guys, how much stuff could you actually put in that glove box on the real Oldsmobile? Basically a map in your glasses, I think. Sunglasses. Oops. But still, quite a lot of nice detail. And again, doesn't really matter if there's mold marks under here as long as they don't interfere with anything. There's a bit of a script on here saying Lindbergh made this. 67 olds used under license, it says. Yeah, there, you can see that. So yeah, quite nice. Quite nice indeed. Let's take a look at the other interior panels. And here we have the inner door panels. Again, molded as separate pieces. So again, you get your... GM window winders that actually look like GM window winders instead of just little blobs of plastic because they couldn't get in there. Very nice detail. The Oldsmobile star is in there. And then we've got our bottom piece of the center console, the steering wheel, the three-spoke steering wheel, as well as our front seats which have the seat backs, 
molded in the correct pattern for the Oldsmobile of the era. And again, let's bring this up to the camera just so you can drool over the details. <laughs> okay, see how cool that is. Look at the spoke. It's got the steering column mounted to the back. A little bit of it anyway. And then our seats have the nice beaded bit up there. Very good work. Lindbergh really uh, brought up the bar to uh, compete with AMT Monogram and Tamiya at this point. Now we get into our glass components. And as you can see, we've got a windshield and a rear window. Rear window has the little holes for mounting and we are treated to some sun visors. There's the side windows, no drafts, as well as the headlights, the four headlights. And we get our four red taillights. And these have a little waffle pattern molded into them, similar to the headlights. So just bring this up to the camera a little bit and see the pattern on those headlights. And remember that they have to go vertical, horizontal, as opposed to at an angle. So make sure you pay close attention to that when you're putting them in. There's the sun visors with the correct shape, um, which is always nice. Then we take a look at our little red glass here. I don't know if you can pick up that waffle pattern, but it's molded in there for sure. You can see it when you take your glasses off. <laughs> so that is a look at our glass components. And now we get a nice look at my favorite part of all model kits, of course, the chrome, because in the future, everything is chrome, according to SpongeBob. <laughs> so there's our rear bumper and our front grille, which of course would do well with a bit of the uh, Nuln oil wash in there from Citadel. Then the individual windshield wipers and all that chrome side trim, as well as the chrome rear window molding. Then we've got the nice Oldsmobile wheels here. These were uh, pretty cool back in the day. Then our air cleaner with those intakes going on there, as well as our shift lever for inside. You paint the bottom black here. More of that chrome trim. There's our valve covers, the top of the console. And then here we have the side no drafts with chrome. So let's just take a look at this up in the camera. Of course, I missed a bunch of these bits, but whatever. So there you can see the nice grill in there. And Oldsmobile had the front turn signals molded, or actually set in the grill here in 67 and 68. 66 as well and then in 69 they moved that the headlight over and then we got the extended grill with the divider in the middle but this of course is before that time you can see uh, the Oldsmobile letters right in the back here just as it would be in 67 and then of course our center console looking very nice valve covers rear view mirror, all kinds of goodies. Lots of chrome on this, so look at the wheels there. Buick also had similar wheels to this, but uh, we don't mention the Buick on an Oldsmobile video. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. So yeah, it looks quite nice. Should be good to uh, put in your car, and that's the beauty of uh, the old cars versus the new. There's lots of chrome on them. Now you basically just get the emblem in a little bit, so not like it was. Now we get into the tires where the rubber hits the road and what I've noticed something here that I didn't notice until I did this review. Now remember when I was saying that uh, Lindbergh was trying to you know get in that game with AMT and all that to uh, try to take down Tamiya to uh, build models as good as the Tamiya quality? Well Remember how I was sort of reflecting on how this thing reminded me of the AMT effort? The funny part about this is these tires are Firestone Super Sport Wide Ovals. Exactly what AMT was offering. Which is really amazing that Lindbergh would try to duplicate the same type of tire and not use a Goodyear or something else. And in fact, it even goes as far as the tread pattern. So I really had to do a double take. However, here's an AMT Firestone Wide Oval, and as you can tell, the AMT being here, 
that it is a, a different mold, but a mold of the same tire, basically. So it's a little bit wider. The uh, ring in there for painting your red lines is a little more crisp than on the Limburg effort, but it's still the same tire, almost tire for tire, which is a really interesting thing. I never noticed that before. But anyway, it is nice to have new tires regardless. Finally, we get into our decal sheet, and we have this interesting license plate, a 44267 from West Virginia. And then if you're a Stephen King's fan, you can have your Olds in Maine. <laughs> the, this Olds 67 license plate. Again, I, I don't really like these specific plates because let's say you got a couple of different cars and you like the main license plate. You can only put it on an Olds. You can't put this on a like a Ford or a Chrysler or anything, heaven forbid, right? Uh, it would have been better if it was just something generic in there. Uh, anyway, you get decals for your instruments. Uh, these are really hard to see. A 442 ones for the side emblems. And of course, well, there's the old star and many other things that are in there that I can't see from where I am. However, they make great decals. And that completes our look at the Lindbergh Olds 442 with the W30 forced air induction system. And if you have built this kit, please let us know down in the comments below how you liked it, how you liked the fit and finish, and what kind of color did you paint the thing? All right, fans, wasn't that a great kit? Actually, I've been thinking about it. If you do know if Dr. Olds is around, let me know in the comments section down below. Maybe you can get him to comment. I don't know. Okay, he was an actor uh, in the 60s, so he would be quite old at this stage. Anyway, if you like these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you are the first to know about it. Let's get this thing up to 100 likes so it hits that Google search engine. And next week we will be checking out another great car from 1967, and I sure hope you will be there. Until next time, keep it on the road. <laughs>